welcome to Brand Builders TV. Deep dive topics, tools, and resources brought to you by global thought leaders from within the Brand Builders Club. This show gives you access to the strategies that you can use to move forward with ease and flow in every area of your life and business. In today's show, Greg is going to be talking about what the term charity begins at home really means and how we can change people's approach to life. Come and join the conversation, learn it, model it and get shit done. Let's go. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Greg Garrity of Drive Change for Good and I'm coming to you today on Rumble TV. I'd like to talk to you today about something that um, we hear quite often. And that's the, the old... ...to uh, the idea that we should be looking after uh, certain people in our society. And... And the equivalent of that's the punchline I don't have to think anymore and Ah, hello. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there at all. So I don't know how far you could hear, hear me. So if I start again, roughly from this point. So people, people are using the phrase charity begins at home all the time. And they're saying it without really thinking about what it means. They're using it as a, almost as a, a default clause in, in arguments. Um, it's like, well, we, we should do more for other people. Well, charity begins at home. So we've got to make sure we're, we're looked after before we look after anybody else. So I started to look into it a little bit, and I found that in ancient Greece, actually, the word that charity derives from uh, actually had a different meaning in those days, and it was love. So it's like, okay, I can understand that, that you might want to uh, go with the idea of love begins at home, because if you're not... Uh, if you're not a loving family unit, then there's going to be discord and life's going to be difficult. And also the fact that uh, we as parents should hopefully be showing our, ch our children how to give and receive love. As well as, from a child's point of view, we need to learn how to receive love and to give it without fear. So I thought that maybe... You know, over the last 50 years or so, we've had a massive breakdown in the in the in the idea of the family unit, what it means uh, going forward. 
So many of those children from broken family units will have received faulty learnings, or perhaps that's the wrong way to express it. They'll have received less than perfect learnings or less than per perfect versions of what life could be and have then gone on to relay these to their children in some and in some respects those children have then gone on to relay to the children that are running around now i know for example of uh, one particular family uh, i used to know uh, one of my neighbors actually uh, in the past once said that um as far as she's concerned nobody can tell her child off nobody can discipline her child except her so if, if the school ring up and say so-and-so has been doing this, that, and the other today, she will defend him and say, no, no, that can't have been him, blah, blah, blah. But then when she gets him in the house, she disciplines him for what she perceives he's done wrong. As a consequence, um, and rather unsurprisingly, the, the young man concerned had very little regard for any form of outside authority. So you can imagine that happening across the board in a lot of different places. Um, we've, we've, it's like we've become introverted. You know, for those, those people that are saying, home starts first, let's make sure our back's covered before we look outside. We've become in, in, introverted. We've become people that don't stand on our own in our own value, our own um, power. We're just comparing ourselves to others all of the time. You know, to a certain degree, we've got, very refreshingly, we have a, a group of young people coming up through the ranks that are 18 to 20, that are blowing out the ideas of, of uh, body discrimination and um, worrying about what other people think and just pushing forward and creating good lives for themselves. But the majority of us look at other people and say, well, they're the same age as me. Do I look as good as that or do I look worse than that? Maybe I've put in a bit too much weight. Maybe I've not got enough teeth left. Maybe, you know, oh, uh, they've got a lovely, strong head of hair. Where's mine? You know, that sort of thing. And instead of just being able to shrug it off because we're proud of our own achievements, we have a good sense of self, our pride has suffered. You know, we have a lot of very brittle people in the world nowadays. And whilst communication is probably more prevalent globally, in all of the platforms that are available in the quantity that it's available i'm going to say communication has never been poorer we don't we don't listen to people we just shout we as a species have become mr angry somebody presents something on online and straight away Everyone turns into a shark. Teeth, 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 teeth. Bite, bite, bite. It's like there's, we've lost the ability to communicate. Now, there were times when uh, schools used to run um, classes on things like debating and philosophy, which may sound all highfalutin and terribly middle class to to a lot of people but it gave you a chance to study how to think you don't automatically know how to think believe it or not this enormous tool this biggest tool in the universe doesn't come with instructions and it doesn't necessarily run the right way People need to learn how to think. And the only way to do that is to be able to discuss how other people think, is to discuss reasoning and, well, fairness, politics. All of these things should be able to be discussed 
because I've got people with very strong opinions, or I know of people with very strong opinions on where they stand in the universe, where they stand on politics, where they stand on gay marriage, where they stand on um, universal basic income. And then when you sit down, you have a further discussion about things. They ask more questions than they've got answers. People aren't clear on, on, on what. It's like Brexit. People voted for Brexit. And then the following day, what is Brexit? What does Brexit mean? Were the highest search things on Google. People have got that used to just listening to sound bites. They become lazy. They become lazy in their own heads. And we've got no one to blame but ourselves. We have allowed society to do that. And as a consequence, we're now paying the price. So tell me, where's your home? Those people that are, that are listening now or listening to the replay later, type in, where is your home? What is your home? You know, is it where your heart is? Is home a safe place for you? We kind of like to hope that home would be a safe place for all of us. But we know in reality that domestic abuse and uh, child abuse are rife within society. And also at this current time with the lockdown, a family that is struggling is going to have a much higher level of emotion and may well be... Um, struggling not to argue constantly so people not, might, might not want to be there they might want to be anywhere else but there but is that still home or do you consider a region a home like i'll be forever english or i'll be or you know the the green valleys of wales or or scotland forever or do you consider a country, you know, like, like England or North America or France? Or do you consider the planet as your home? Do you live on planet Earth? I'm asking you these questions not because I want to be... Um, clever about anything i'm only asking the questions because depending upon your thoughts about where home is will actually change your purpose you know we look at this and if home is your house or your flat then it makes it difficult to have an emotional attachment to anything outside of that, doesn't it? You know, the street could be a street anywhere. Your neighbors could be anybody and chances are you, you won't know them. So it's very hard to get an idea of your purpose and your reason for being. And I think one of the things, if, you, if you've been watching um, my interviews on the Drive Change for Good Facebook page, you'll realize that things that make people resilient are external ties. You know, we all watch the movies where there's a single man or a single woman fighting against all odds. And you know they're going to come out at the end of the day and they're just so <clears throat> and singular. But that's not real life. That doesn't last very long. That sort of focus dwindles over time, especially if we're going to a second lockdown and we're stuck in a house for weeks and weeks on end. How are we going to maintain our identity how are we going to maintain our mental wellness going forward 
how are you going to know who we are at the end of that? You know, nowadays, most people use the busyness to hold out the silence or to hold back the silence because we don't get chance to reflect on our own lives. It's very rarely most of us get chance to sit down and just think, where am I now? Am I where I thought I'd be? If not, why? And what do I want to do about it? And they're very difficult questions if you're not used to asking those questions. Because you might have always had been dreams of being a successful business person. And currently, COVID may have destroyed your business. And you'll be sitting there thinking, well, I've lost everything. I'm a, I'm a loser. I'm useless. Um, don't know what I'm ever going to do in my life. Now is the time to take stock. Now is the time to ask yourself again what you want to be. And if you've lost your business and you ask yourself these questions honestly, you might not want to be a businessman again or woman again. You might want to be a different person. How you respond to the changes that are thrust upon you it gives you a completely different um, avenue on life. You might still want to be a business person, but decide you want, now you've got the benefit of hindsight, decide you want to be in a different business without the limitations of the previous one. There are lots of ways to look at this. If you're in, if you're in debt at the moment, everybody that you owe money to is in the same boat as you. You will obviously try and work with everybody fairly. But there's going to be those that shout loudest and they're going to be those that are aggressive. Don't let it stress you out. It's part of life. You know, we will all get through this. There's nothing that, that, that can't be achieved with time and a little bit of distance. So please think about it. I slightly went off track there, but I think it's important to say. So if you're looking for your purpose, if you're at home and you only have eyes for home, as it were, home's where your heart is, then, then what is your gratification? What is your gratification if you lose your home? You know, home, home for you might mean security or it might mean the place that you, you gave birth to your children or uh, the place you're going to safely retire to. But the bottom line is, if it's home, then, and, and if it's just your house, then it's just bricks and mortar. You can love any bricks and mortar just the same way. It's only our memories and our interpretation that make it different. And we can take our memories with us and we can change our interpretation. You know, what I'm concerned about here is the fact that we look at charity, we say it begins at home. Charity was hijacked as a, I suppose, it went viral, viral as a keyword with the Victorians, uh, Victorian Christians. It became this massive Christian value. And as a result, uh, lots of people put money into charitable causes. They built buildings uh, for uh, destitute uh, women and children and all sorts of things. Perhaps more about uh, the reflection of what, what it made them look like as opposed to what it actually benefited the people that were living there. So it's 
not just charity for charity's sake. We need to think about how we're working with people. We need to think about how we develop. And I'm going to suggest to you that nothing that gratifies just you is going to see you through the next six months or the next year. I think what will see you through that time is going to be you working with other people. Even if, like, like um, a lady I interviewed uh, a week or so ago, she was kept in a room in her house for months because her family were frightened she was going to get COVID. She was essentially a prisoner in her own family house. And she kept herself sane by being on the phone all day, every day, helping other people, supporting other people that were struggling. You can do the same thing. If you're having a hard day, other people will be having a hard day. Ring someone up and make their day better. Use the skills, the valuable skills that you've learned, your social skills, your work skills, your man management skills, maybe just the skills of making people laugh, stupid humor. Contact them, ring them, email them, Zoom them. Spread the love. Spread the charity. It's necessary. It's necessary because I believe that charity begins at home is to say that that's where we all learn to be the people we can be. And it's our job constantly to spread that care and that love out to everyone else. If you think that anything I've said is disastrous or horrible or plain rude, then comment below. Join the conversation. But don't, don't be shouty. Don't use teeth and don't use profanities. Let's get a global conversation going about what we all need to do to move forward and be the best people we can be okay for those of you that aren't aware of this uh, i'm currently going through the process of turning drive change for good into a registered charity and if any of you out there would be interested in the possibility of being a trustee for Drive Change for Good, then also please contact contact me. Direct message me on the uh, Greg Garrity. Either either direct message me or reply in the comments, and let's open up a dialogue. We've got massive things to do together. We've got a world to change. And we've got to drive it for good. Whew. Smooth. <laughs> Have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you here at BBC TV at the same time next Monday, 2 p.m. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. I hope that you've enjoyed the show today as much as we've enjoyed making it for you. If you've got anything out of this episode, please do tell someone else how they can subscribe to the Brand Builders TV channel at youtube.com forward slash Brand Builders TV. Why not join us at our next Brand Builders Thinkubator, a global mastermind that we run every week to take away the loneliness of being in business on your own. For more information and to book your place, visit light.brandbuilders.club forward slash Thinkubator. That's light.brandbuilders.club forward slash Thinkubator. 
Until next time, be the ripple that you wish to see in the world and we'll see you soon.